Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Last Days of Europe with me Alpha Pi Omega and Gross Germanisches Reich. So the oil crisis has hit us pretty heavily and Frankfurt Stock Exchange has collapsed which is giving us according to the game a 142% yearly deficit uh, meaning the deficit of our GDP. If this won't get recalculated in a couple of days, I think we are very likely looking at the dancing at the ashes of Germania with possible hints of cannibalism and slave labor in the distance because this would ruin our economy. The fact that our military spending is now 564 billion dollars, which is Okay, that's not 10 times, it's 20 times more than we had before. Well, I don't even know where to start. Anyway, the fact that our EU GDP growth is dropping by 17.4% is fine. That is fine. But this, this is insanity. So we're going to see if that fixes itself. Frankfurt stock market crash amidst oil crisis. With the oil crisis and its economic effects rippling through the world, the Greater Germanic Reich was hit particularly badly by it, as the Frankfurt Stock Exchange dropped by over 100 points. Thousands have already been laid off, and several businesses appear on the road to insolvency. Economists were quick to note that the Reich's dependency on oil massively increased due to vast industrialization efforts under the Zollverein, particularly in Eastern Europe. Führer Speer has yet to publicly react to this crisis. As economic reform was the main pillar of his reform policy, the abrupt fizzling out of the so-called Wirtschaftswunder that took shape under the guidance of Reichswirtschaft Minister Ludwig Erhard is sure to take a massive toll on public approval. Well, okay, it said that we have a new focus tree. Yep, we do. So, what do we have here? Achilles heel struck 21 days. As we f and we thought we had it all. For the first time in decades, the Reich's future had seemed bright. The economy was on the up, civil strife was at a low, and the people's confidence in their government was unparalleled since the days of Hitler. It only takes a breeze to set the whole house of cards wobbling, however, and the winds of change are blowing. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and this oil crisis has hit us where it hurts, the economy. Sudden shortages have halted the flow of capital and material, and prices on the Frankfurt stock market have plummeted to levels unseen since the 50s. We aren't the only nation left scrambling. Fuel shortages mean international trade has become prohibitively expensive. If we want to drag ourselves out of this hole, it is going to be by our own efforts. An arrow from the Middle East has struck our heel, plunging the Reich into chaos. What 21 days? Oh, this is bypassed. Okay, so now we get the hard bleeds. The crisis is taking its toll. Countless businesses have closed their doors indefinitely, and the unemployed have started to fill the streets. Where only days ago Germans would have believed that they were in the middle of a golden age, now they, the government, now they are probably asking the government to do something, anything to stop the spiraling situation. They demand work, food, aid for their families, something to show that the Reich has not returned to the disaster of the 50s, or even the hell that was the Weimar Republic. The Reich's arteries have been cut, and as blood is spilling across Europe, it shows no sign of stopping. The oil crisis wreaking havoc in Germany. The growth of skilled labor in Germany will be reversed. Well, okay. Uh, in the meantime, we can okay the Reich in crisis. Economic status collapsing, social status rebellions. <coughs> Pardon me. The oil crisis has made the social tension in the Reich reach a boiling point. As the sulfur line economically collapses, the people embark on protests against the NSDAP and for liberalization. Getting both the people as well as the economy back under control quickly is of utmost importance, so economic status collapsing and social status rebellious. Improving the economy inevitably comes at the cost of polarizing society even more, but without such improvements Germany is bound for catastrophe. Strike the companies. Implement economic reforms, declare martial law, 
Okay, so that one can happen only if social status is catastrophic. This one requires we are ready to implement economic reform. We haven't gotten to all Vervirtschaftsfeeders. Curtail public meetings has completed the focus the heart bleeds. Social tensions improve moderately. Increases public meetings. Distribute propaganda. Improves moderately. Okay, so we'll have to take these two as fast as possible. And uh, also for Ein. Uh, we're still getting money here, so Tradesmanship Initiative. Uh, Reichnachricht and these, nothing. So for Ein, nothing. Global conflicts. Seize oil reserves. Okay, well, I mean, don't think that's gonna help us. 0.5 billion is nothing. Uh, well, okay. Now we're doing the hard bleeds. So let's just continue doing uh, what we're doing. Because, I mean. Really, realistically, there's nothing else we can do. Wait. Uh, oh, t Are you seeing this? My god. This is a nightmare. Okay, well, we have no production of anything. Thank God for reserves. Okay, you guys are moving on your own volition. That is fine. Um, what about you? You're supposed to be here, why aren't you? Can you not understand? This is you, right? Three divisions of 3rd Infantry Army. Yeah. Is it because of supply? <laughs> Weird. A frustrating setback. God, why did he forget his cigars at home? Edhard felt like a fool for making such a simple mistake, because he sort of needed them right now. It was rare to annoy him to the point of anger, but he supposed it would not it would take a massive favor for that to happen. Was it his fault? Was it Spears? Did the fact that the company he had found and assigned for the railway project slack off from their work and cut corners make his own favor and it was apparent? Certainly not. And now? Of all the things, an oil crisis, Speer groaned, rubbing his face in his hands. He had barely gotten a lick of sleep in the past two days, sorting through tons of paperwork, mainly the kind that left him frustrated afterwards. Both him and Erhard were sifting through documentation about the country's financial situation, alongside the situation of the company they hired. My fear, we'll have to let the government take over the railway project. The company is teetering on the verge of bankruptcy. Another day and they may very well explode. The proposition was an expensive one. Not only would it be complicated to process through bureaucracy, just the job of reassigning people and finding new workers and materials to keep the project going, even in a crawl, would take weeks at the very least, with the current crisis likely making it even longer. Yeah, I suppose we must. Call the CEO of the company, Herr Erhard Speer replied. This is going to be a long read. So... The erection of Farstecken program will halt. Cost of maintaining the existing infrastructure will increase by 250%. And we can't change it anymore. Cool. So it was suppo I I was supposed to lower that before. Now it's too late. And not that it would matter really. Okay, three divisions sent to Bahatist Iraq have arrived. Uh, so where are you? Iraqi volunteers. Cool, so this is... Okay, that's not bad. That is actually fairly good. So you know what, you're gonna go here. Okay, that's that's not good. I'm gonna go this way. Yeah. 
this will be your plan because you need to take this area and move northwards from here I don't know who's fighting in here but they are at war with us so let's make them pay the Muslim Brotherhood has defeated Egypt in war okay oh well, that's not great but we are still fighting here so as long as you are fighting that is fine what about you guys now uh, I don't understand what's going on here Oman well, they're eliminating them. You know what? This. This is what we're gonna do. Okay, we got some... Okay, we got some production units back. Let's put 25 on here. change everything to one factory so that we have a steady stream of reinforcements for the losses that we might incur and at least some kind of production efficiency I don't think we have 25 projects so we'll have some spares Uh, no, this is actually way more than before. Damn. Okay, 25. Did I forget about something? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Where's the rest of the factories? Who is hogging my factories? I should have 25. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, wait, 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 because you got 5. Okay, and so do you. Okay, so that's it. Okay, now it's 25. And we are still missing 2. Okay, good. So the production is getting back on track. We're not getting massive amounts, but you know, even five helicopters per week or uh, three tanks per week or something is good. Take to the streets. Oh no. Dieter Sprout was hoarse from yelling, but he yelled all the same. His arms ached from waving his placard, hastily scrawled in anger as he saw the procession marching through the streets, yet he still held it high. His feet were sore from trampling the cobbles all day, but still he stood, surrounded by other men of what had once been his office. They had received the news of the collapse of the Frankfurt stock market this morning, and it had only been a matter of hours before his boss, head in hands, had informed him that the firm had been dissolved. He hadn't believed it, not until the building security has escorted him out. Now they were on the streets. All he could see in every direction were men just like him, a sea of people informed their services were no longer required. The streets before the Kölner Rathaus were flooded with light, illuminating the rolling mass of people demanding their government do something, anything to alleviate their woes. A sliver of him pitied whoever was inside. The rest of him wanted to see them dragged out, tarred and feathered. His brother in Aachen had been waved off as well. His wife's family in Baden-Baden had got into a fist fight with their landlord when he demanded rent in advance. Was it such a crime to demand help from their government, the government that had caused this disaster? They were being beaten and blooded for the sin of wanting food to eat. A roof to sleep under a government that can... I mean, you were laid off in the morning. I mean, did you get paid on a daily basis? What the hell are you talking about? No savings or anything? Social tensions worsen. Regime stability drops. Highly decreases security. Oppressive police policy. 
trade unions and public meetings policy effectiveness we need to keep an eye on the state of the reich 68.5 yeah that's not great so token political promises let's charge reactionaries with treason because that's gonna lower our current regime stability somewhat but in the end it's gonna give us 20 percent extra so that is that is an investment into the future and we can declare martial law oh social status is catastrophic Social tensions improve significantly. Conservative cause in the Reich significant benefits from this. Increases security and gain base stability. The rate by which social tension increases every two weeks increases drastically. Society decreases monthly security policy effectiveness. Declaration of martial law will improve social tensions somewhat. What? So this improves significantly our social tensions, but they dramatically increase the decline. But it improves that. Okay, I'm not. I'm not taking that one unless we absolutely have to. And the hard bleeds is going to be done soon. At which point we can curtail public meetings. And distribute. Well, we can distribute propaganda. So that's going to be good. I hope. How's the economy? Okay, this is this is much better. Here with a deficit of 28% of GDP. I can understand that and that seems realistic, to be quite honest. Republic of Iraq has defeated the Iraqi Republic. Uh, okay, Islamic Republic. Iraq. Okay, well, we'll see what that's happening. What's gonna happen? You guys doing anything? No, you aren't. That's unfortunately the truth of the situation. Okay, so you're moving to intercept. You guys are the only ones that are actually making some progress here on your own. The rest we have to drag kicking and screaming. With extreme prejudice, oh no. Henrik spat and he connected with a rioter's face with a sickening crunch and he fell to the floor. Stepping over the limb body, he forced his shield forward, breaking the nose of another face contorted with rage. Behind him, his tightly packed comrade, comrades stepped over the previous figure, uncaring of whether their boot, where their boots landed. Not that they had the room to make any consideration for his comfort. Like a hot white phalanx, the weight of the men behind them kept them f facing the enemy ahead. His orders had been to suppress the riot at any cost, and he was glad of the leeway granted him. Without it, he would likely be dead. The scene reminded him of nothing more than the student protest that had taken uh, place before Hitler's death. Ahead of him was a sea of screaming faces. Waving placards, sticks, and bats, rocks were flying through the air, raining down on his helmet like a hailstorm. He had been out here for hours, pushing, shoving, lashing out with a baton that had taken so much punishment that the wood was starting to splinter. He thrusted forward and a woman screamed as it drove into her eye. She fell? Oh my god. She fell back into the crowd, and any remorse Heinrich might have felt was suppressed by panic as the rioters pressed forwards and his shield was pushed against his chest. He couldn't breathe, exhaling, but unable to inhale, he was being crushed. His panic was relieved by his, by the hiss of tear gas canister flying over his head. The roar of the crowd turned to screeching and coughing, and Dietrich's breath returned. He slammed his shield forward. And the front of rioters fell apart, re revealing the crowd had collapsed. Stumbling blindly back from the clouds of gas, 
He fumbled at his belt and pulled on his mask. He raised his arm and charged forward. His baton connected with Arata's face with a sickening crunch. Oh dear god. Uh, well, the current martial law is still not a good idea. Hey, you guys. I mean, we're taking Basra, no matter what you say we do. Okay, afterwards, I think we can go against the Japanese here. We'll see how it's gonna go. Oh, I was about to ask where we are on the Heart of Bleeds. And we got the Logistics Company. Oh. The West Cowers or the East Screams. The Western and Sulfur Iron is struck by the oil crisis, decreasing their payments to the Sulfur Iron budget by 5%. The Eastern and Sulfur Iron is struck by the oil crisis, decreasing. Uh, we need to take both of them. Was Zain Mus, Mus Zain. And then we have three choices the Force Vision, the Fearless Will, or the Party's Mind. The Force Vision, I think, is the best one as usual. The economic status improves significantly. We spend 3 billion. Inflation increases. Uh, to the people. Firawas, Ambrosia of the North, Anessia of the West, Fox Architect, and this one is conservative, right? Yeah. One drop in the sea. Yeah, that's. that's I mean, this one is completely wrong for us. Uh, the German way, the European way, United Response. Pulling on the rope, budget renegotiations. Uh, it's costly. Ruin unrest. Government outreach. Past the brown curtain. Folks movement. Change is coming to the Reich. Are we going for democracy? A secret fear was carried between all the members of the gang. As the ashes of the German Civil War resided, buildings burned down, being rebuilt, fallen soldiers given their graves, and those afflicted soul were returning to a semblance of normal life. They were afraid that the Nazi death group on propaganda would choke out what was left of a redeemable future. And yet they continued to hope. Years and years down the line, as the fin drew narrower, and Speer's power grow as his and the gang's sweeping reform began forging Germany into a new sort of superpower. Those who sought freedom from Nazi rule saw a window of opportunity, and the fight in the dark began anew. Then the match was struck, with the coming and going of the economic crash and internal disarray. Alongside the gang's subtle interference, the movement against the government has exploded, to the point where it has grown out of their control. Ludwig Erhard, heading from Trasco, Helmut Schmidt and Kurt Kaisinger thought they continued to work, though they continued to work within and against the NSDAP, watches Germany's fate draw closer and closer more rapidly than perhaps anyone would expect. It is an ideal. We will prevail. How do we put the pieces back together? We can rely on no one but our own people. Folks will. Requires the modern Asclepius. Well, we'll see what the plans are. I think that this one we can actually take at all. The feeders will... We will have to choose between this one. I'm tempted to go with these guys because they always knew what they're doing and while I like Speer, he's more of a figurehead at this point. No, this is looking pretty weird. Uh, well, okay, I mean, we finished the focus so we need to take the next one. Let's go with the Westcowers first. 
While the Western members of the Sofra Aina are not as intrinsically linked to Germany as the East is, they too have been hit by the ongoing crisis. Their more independent economies are crumpling under the pressure, facing similar problems of mass unemployment and plummeting stock prices to those of the Reich. Belts are being tightened across Western Europe, and governments are implementing rapid programs of austerity, slashing budgets and implementing wild spending cuts. Unfortunately, this includes their contribution to the Sofra Ein. Another avenue of credit has been cut off to us, and it is becoming increasingly clear that we must deal with this crisis ourselves. Oh, no kidding. Mm. Anything... Engineering. Advanced... Let's go with advanced... Uh, is it advanced radio? No, where did I read that? Okay, so this is almost amplification. Allowing for the better transmission of our signals alongside the added bonus of being able to listen to our enemies, low noise amplification will revolutionize the field of radio wave communication. So defense... Oh no, it gives us the advanced radio. Okay, defense plus 45% breakthrough plus 30. Oh, that's pretty cool. And our detection plus 5%. Because we have radio in all of our units. Uh... Consumer goods plus free? What? Okay. You start producing. Okay, uh, so let's go with distribute propaganda. Social status is rebellious and curtail public meetings. Conservatives benefit from it. Rate by which social tension increases. Increases somewhat. Uh, what? Society so increases monthly public. Social tension improves moderately. Yeah, I think this is like a, you know, uh, this is like shooting ourselves in the leg because you fix your immediate problem, and then the other ones, well, the other ones are completely wrong. Okay, let's get rid of these. Distribute propaganda, we will keep rolling. 29% deficit. Dear Lord. Okay, so you guys are... Actually, let's deal with the... This is Japanese? No, it's just an infantry division. Okay, uh, you are at war with just... These guys, okay, so that's fine. I'm not gonna uh, butcher you for that. Okay, you're moving from Bastra forward. And that is good. I'm gonna let you do this on your own. And you guys are pretty much done here. Okay, uh, they're advancing in the south on their own. So that is pretty cool. Uh, okay, we actually encircled the enemy. So that is fine. Uh, yeah, okay, so that is... Wait, what the hell? That is part of the Muslim Brotherhood, so why haven't you... Oh, because that's across the Suez Canal. Okay. Gotcha. So now we can just do this. It's actually pretty fine. So go. And we can get military investment. Send weapons. I don't think we have to. Uh, military and infrastructure investment. Let's get that. Naval consumption. From refineries. Nothing else. Conflicts. I don't think we need to do well. We can increase our commitment. Oh, it can go above 100. Okay, gotcha. So that's fine. Seizing the oil reserves again at this point that makes absolutely no difference. So, what about you guys? I'm gonna keep you here, delete this. 
Uh, wait, are you anymore with all of these guys? Or yeah, okay. So I want you to go like this. Okay, cool. That is fine, because it will mean that we take this area and can move somewhere else. Black, red and gold. Oh no. The television crackled and fizzled with static. Peter scowled and smacked it, and the view resolved. But this was not the 5 o'clock news. Heavy bags hung under his eyes, but the look on his face was one of triumph. Instead of the immaculate hair on the usual presenter, this man looked tired. Instead of the post set, behind this man was a simple tricolor of black, red and gold. He glanced past the camera, looking for some confirmation. Are we live? Good, good. He returned his gaze to the camera and grinned, shuffling his notes. People of Germany, things are bad. I don't have to tell you that. Everyone's out of work or losing their job. The Reichsmark buys a penny's worth. There are riots in the streets and we, will, and we sit watching our TVs while some newscasters tell us that today the Orpo killed 15 people in the name of peace. Like that's the way it's supposed to be. This government doesn't give a shit about you. It only cares about enriching itself or funneling money to those corrupt bastards at IG Farben. Well, I think this was written a long time ago actually. Things are bad. Worse than bad. They're crazy. We sit in the house while everything is getting worse and say, please just let me have my TV that was made by some poor pool on a penny's wage. Leave me alone. Well, I'm not leaving you alone. I want you to get mad. Get mad about the oil crisis and the stock market crash and the Cold War and the murders committed by our government every day. I want you to say, I'm a human being, goddammit, my wife has value. I want you to go out into the streets cause things Cause things aren't going to change until you get mad. I want you to go out there and shout, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Get up out of your chair, go to the window, and let the government know, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Peter got, or Peter, I mentioned Pieter, Piet, Pieter, it's a weird, weird version of the name. Got out of the chair and opened the window. People were yelling. He put on his coat, opened the door, walked out into the street and opened his mouth. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Progressivism, political... Oh, God. Yeah, the game is hitting us pretty heavily here. Some weapons. We don't need that. So fine. Are we just sending weapons? Yeah, that's all we can do. Ah, well, at least the fighting is going well. A lesson in international relations. Okay, that's going to be the last event for this episode. Uh, then I'm going to go and have my dinner. The sound of meticulous strokes, lines and slashes subsided, leaving the lecture's hails boards covered by a chalk impression of a map of the so-called mid Midwara Osten, or the Middle East, the Orient, that mass of the imperial borders that so recently exploded in a spectacular burst of flames, known only as the oil crisis, and the current object of the Reich's foreign policy, arose and annotations denoted the various conflicts taking place in the region. As this was indeed a course on foreign policy, the professor grasped onto Germania's policy towards the Middle East as an excellent case study in realpolitik of the most sophisticated kind. Now, class, why on earth would the Führer see fit to support the Baat? he asked, adding yet another line on the board to emphasize the words Arabische Sozialisten. Because they represent the interest of the Aryan race in the Middle East? A student in the front row answered, thinking out loud. Well, there is an ongoing academic debate as to what degree of honorary Aryan the Arabs may aspire to reach, but no, they are not considered Aryan. Expand your horizon because they support the noble ideas of National Socialism, came the reply, this time from a female student further back. Their socialism is particularly lacking in racial awareness, and even then would only represent the sight of an occupied and inferior people for some sick brand of justice. Not it. 
This line of questioning was apparently more demanding than the professor had previously imagined. After the fifth incorrect attempt, he suspected that even he had started doubting the reasons for German involvement in the Middle East. A dangerous prospect. An academic in the Reich's upper echelon only survived by virtue of interpreting the actions of the regime in the right way, not by questioning them. A word that his silence drew more suspicion by the second, he vulgarly interrupted the student in the middle of struggling to relate the current civil war in Egypt to the crusade of Frederick Barbarossa with what he assumed was the answer the folks, however, was least likely to dislike. Oil. It's all about the damn oil. Okay, did this increase it above 100? No, it's still 100. Okay, so let's uh, just do a little thing here. Okay, so we are winning in Egypt. We are winning in Iraq. And we are winning in Oman, as it's supposed to be. So, while these conflicts are way slower than we expected. Oh god, this is so, so sad. Hey! Yearly surplus of 21.49% of GDP, what? What the hell are you talking about? Revenue, business tax, 217 billion, what the hell? Yearly surplus of 83 billion, well that would, I think that the numbers are, are skewed. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, we're gonna keep trotting ahead. I'm really interesting what this choice is going to be for us. To banish want, Caesars do. The model society, social justice, united future. Oh, this would increase GDP growth and decrease inflation by 2.5%. The People's Forum. Interest rate will decrease. Our interest rate will decrease. What's our interest rate? Well, if it increases by that, it decreases to negative numbers. <laughs> so that's cool. I mean, why not? Inflation will decrease. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. But folks won't. Well, we'll see. Anyway, as I said, see you next time.